Hello kings and queens and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be covering Diana Jungle. Diana Jungle is currently very very strong and a very good pick in solo queue. So if you all are looking to get better at the jungle role and you're looking for maybe an AP assassin to play in the jungle, I would highly recommend picking up Diana. She's relatively easy to pick up. She is very very strong in the meta and she's a great AP option if your team doesn't really have a lot of that. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into that video, guys. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you do enjoy today's video. Let's get into it. So now to get to the rune pages, guys. And when it comes to runes, depending on which Diana main you are asking, it will vary quite a bit. So I'm just going to grab the rune page that is agreed upon by most Diana players to be a very consistently strong rune page to get you guys off on the right foot. Uh, but I will say this, guys, once you guys are getting more familiar with this champion, you can experiment a little bit. Um, some Diana players like to go Phase Rush, some like to go Dark Harvest, some like to go Electrocute. Not all of them like to go Conqueror, but the majority of Diana players do agree that Conqueror is probably the most consistent rune setup to go on the champion. So that'll be the rune page that we're going over here today that I will explain for all of you. So here you can see on the primary keystone we have here is Conqueror. Um, no surprise here, you, you stack this incredibly quick, of course, because all, all of your abilities will provide you with two stacks. And getting that bonus Adaptive Force uh, when you have a fully stacked Conqueror will make your entire combo just hurt more, and you also be healing a decent amount on top of that, which is really nice. You can see here, secondary, secondary we go Triumph here. Uh, Overheal is completely useless on Diana, and Presence of Mind you don't need because you're going to be in the jungle. You get plenty of sustain for your mana. So Triumph is the best option here. Just providing you with that bonus uh, HP when you do get kills can sometimes mean the difference between you living and dying in certain team fights. Moving on from there, you do have a choice between Legend Alacrity and Tenacity. I do think Alacrity is the better option. Uh, to be quite honest, but if you're against a team that has very, very high CC, maybe a lot of point and click stuns, something like a Twisted Fate, something like an Annie, then perhaps run Tenacity uh, and, and Mercury Treads on top of that just so you're not CC'd for nearly as long. But as a general rule of thumb, if that's not the case, you're not against a full CC comp, going Legend Alacrity is the best option. It just allows you to clear faster and it pairs very well with the item options we'll be going over later in the video. Um, it's just the movement speed, uh, the, the attack speed stacking, also working well with your passive, of course. Now, Coup de Gras. Um, this deals more damage to low health enemy champions. This should come as no surprise. Generally, on Diana, you want to be getting in there, one shotting a target, and, uh, you know, trying to either continue the fight after that or getting out depending on the circumstances, right? And generally, you, when you're engaging onto somebody else, you'll be full HP the entire time, so that's why last stand doesn't make any sense. And generally speaking, you do build some health items with Diana, so going cut down doesn't make sense either. You just want Coup de Gras to get that execute on those lower HP targets. Now, on the secondary tree, we run Domination, and on the Domination tree, we decide to go for Sudden Impact with Ravenous Hunter. Um, on occasion, you can swap out Ravenous Hunter for Relentless Hunter, uh, but as a general rule of thumb, Ravenous Hunter is very consistent, provides you with that bonus sustain, which helps when you're clearing your jungle, as well as in the later stages of the game, when you're just needing a little bit of sustain in between fights, perhaps. And Sudden Impact should come as no surprise. Magic Penetration is extremely cost efficient, and having that in your rune setup uh, will allow you to get kills that otherwise you normally wouldn't be able to have. Uh, so do make sure to run Sudden Impact pretty much all of the time if you are going this rune page setup. Now, uh, here, this should come as no surprise, we have Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. And uh, yeah, that's basically the end of this rune page, guys. The only variation of the Conqueror rune page that you will see that is uh, decent, I would say, is running Magical Footwear with Cosmic Insight on the Inspiration Tree secondary instead of the you know standard uh, domination setup. Uh, the re only reason you'd really want to run this, guys, is if you're kind of beat in the early game and your your goal in this game is to scale. You're looking to outscale your opponent. Uh, that just having that cost efficiency for getting the Magical Footwear and then the bonus uh, Summoner Spell Haste that you get on your Smite will help you clear faster and get through your jungle faster, which will help you get to the late game easier. Um, Generally, uh, if, if you are beat in the early game, this is not a bad option, uh, but both can work just fine, guys. Uh, and, and that's going to be the end of the rune uh, page section. We're going to move on to the next part of the video. All right, so now to speak a little bit about items on Diana here. As you can clearly see here, uh, for starter items, we're running Ember Knife with refillable potion with dark seal now i will say you can go Hailblade, guys but i do not think that it is nearly as strong as ember knife 
Diana is a champion who has a lot of dueling potential and is extremely powerful um, at doing so. So you really want to maximize uh, your ability to get in there and duel people and skirmish with them. Now, Ember Knife does this the best, of course, because it provides you with basically a mini exhaust that gives you bonus damage to a single target that you're looking to fight. And Diana generally will have a single target burst, right? She's looking to just take out one character or maybe pull in multiple characters in certain situations. But, you know, for the most part, you're looking to assassinate one carry and uh, either continue the fight from there or look to get out, right? And Ember Knife just allows you to do that the easiest. It provides you with the most damage. It provides you with the most damage mitigation because generally the person that you're going for will also deal a lot of damage. So it is very beneficial to negate their damage when you're going in on them. So I do highly recommend going Ember Knife. And on your first recall, guys, I'll recommend that you guys always buy a Dark Seal. This Dark Seal is just a really, really safe uh, first back option. Uh, it'll allow you to have the potential to snowball um, and upgrade this to a Magize later. But if if not, I mean, you still get the bonus 40 health to 15 ability power. It's just a really good item. Uh, but yeah, if you ever get this to 10 stacks, you can just upgrade it and uh, you can snowball incredibly hard. So it's just a really nice little buy. Now, moving on from there, we have all the mythic options you can go on Diana. And I'll explain each and every one of them. Now, for obvious reasons, Rocket Belt and Night Harvester are very popular on Diana. It just makes a lot of sense to go these items. They provide you with all the stats you need, as well as, of course, really nice passives that really complement Diana's kit. So to talk about Rocket Belt first, um, and, and wh who I see run this, and, and why you should run it if you are thinking about it, uh, Rocket Belt's really nice because, of course, it gives you an extra gap closer to close that gap sometimes that you can't otherwise, you know, close. So... Being able to run this item using that active and being able to burst the target with this item, uh, it just makes your life a lot easier. Um, of course, it gives pretty much the same stats as Night Harvester, just minus 50 health. Uh, but then it also gives 6 magic penetration. So what I will say about Hextech Rocket Belt, when you do start to build more and more items, um, you will notice that your DPS is much higher than it is with Night Harvester because of the bonus magic penetration from the Mythic passive. Um, in the earlier stages of the game, Night Harvester is stronger um but as soon as you get two to three items that's when the damage that you deal with hextech rocket belt actually surpasses night harvester so uh do with that what you will guys i think uh both items are very strong it's a lot easier to proc night harvester on targets uh but with that being said uh, having the extra dash and the bonus magic penetration for every um uh, legendary item you have is extremely cost efficient from the hextech rocket belt uh, both are fantastic. Both are really good in their own regard. Um, I do think that, however, Hextech Rocket Belt is the stronger item out of these two. Uh, but if you're newer to Diana, I would actually recommend going Night Harvester, just because it's less to focus on initially until you really get the basics of the champion. And then once you do fully understand Diana as a champion, you can then start using Hextech Rocket Belt more so just to get that extra gap close and provide yourself with some extra mechanics to get kills. <clears throat> Now, uh, one item on here that you guys don't see too much most likely is Riftmaker, and I'll explain why I think this is a really good item on Diana. Uh, first and foremost, of course, it gives you all of the stats you need, which is ability power, health, and ability haste, all really awesome. But one thing that is also really nice about this item is it gives you Omnivamp. And for those of you guys who don't know what Omnivamp is, it basically just means that it gives you healing on your abilities as well as your attacks. So... This is really, really cost efficient on Diana because for the most part, you guys should be running uh, Conqueror, which does provide bonus healing, which stacks incredibly nicely with Riftmaker, guys. A fully stacked Conqueror with Riftmaker, you'll be healing actually quite a bit, and you will be doing an absurd amount of damage. The 3% bonus, max 9% bonus damage, it's pretty much 10% bonus damage that you get in uh, battle, uh, stacked up with all that Omnivamp, makes you essentially a drain tank that is extremely challenging to take down. Um, I do think that if you guys haven't tried this item on Diana, maybe you're a Diana main uh, looking for some new build pass, uh, try out Riftmaker, uh, build that with Nash's Tooth, and yeah, just, just play it out. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it. I personally love this build. I think it's very unique. It's very strong, and the amount of damage that you do get from this is actually quite surprising, so give it a shot, guys. Moving out from there, guys, after you build your mythic item, we have standard core items here. 
uh, Nash's Tooth and Zhonya's Hourglass, both incredibly strong. Nash's Tooth for obvious reasons, 100 ability power, 50% attack speed, both stats that Diana really loves to have with her passive, of course, and having your attacks deal 15 plus 20% of your ability power, magic damage on hit, also pairs really nicely with your passive, uh, and Conqueror, stacking that up, uh, getting that fully stacked for fights. Um, it just makes it easier. And of course, jungle clearing is incredibly fast with Nash's Tooth, guys. You're basically going to be killing camps with like three auto attacks once you have the second item completed. Um, it's really, really quick uh, to clear your jungle. It's really good for killing enemies. It just gives you a lot of ability power. Uh, it's just an awesome item. And then Zhonya's Hourglass. Uh, generally, I would recommend to get third item uh, in, in pretty much all games. Uh, it's just a really good item on Diana once again. Allows you to get in there, one shot a squishy target, and Zhonya's right after. Stalling out, making it so the enemy team can't uh, follow up and try and trade kills. And it allows your team time to you know follow up with you and proceed to win the fight because you made it a 4v5. So, a really great item for survivability purposes, for one-shotting carries. Uh, highly recommend building these items and like pretty much all of your games. With that being said though, there are situational items that are very good, and we're going to go over all of these as well. So first and foremost, Morello Nomicon is really, really strong. Uh, you only want to get this, of course, though, when the enemy team has a bunch of healing and you need some form of heal cut. That's what Morello Nomicon does. It does give you know really good AP uh, and health, uh, which is really helpful for Diana's kit. Magi's Soul Stealer, you only want to be completing this when you have 10 Dark Seal stacks stacked up. If you listened and got your Dark Seal early, upgrading this to a Magi Soul Stealer when you have 10 stacks is extremely strong. Uh, highly recommend doing this 100% of the time. Uh, Rabidon's Death Cap is really strong when the enemy team is itemizing no magic resist and you're really fed. So uh, really consider buying this item, guys. If you press tab, the enemy team has no MR and you're just doing really good. Maybe you have like a fully stacked Dark Seal and you have a Magi's already. Getting a Rabidon on top of that will just allow you to obliterate the enemy team. Uh, on top of that, Banshee's Veil is really, really good in the event that you're against a team with a lot of ability power and those point-and-click stuns that are really annoying that we talked about earlier. Uh, if you're against like Annie, Twisted Fate, building a Banshee's Veil is just a really, really hard counter to these uh, types of champions because they can no longer just gold card you or stun you, uh, which makes your life a lot easier. It's also decent to get versus uh, poke champions as well, so do consider it in that situation too. Now, from there, uh, Void Staff is a really, really cost-efficient item, guys. 40% magic penetration is incredibly powerful. It only costs 2,700 gold, so it's a relatively cheap item as well. I highly recommend buying this whenever the enemy team is stacking magic resist. It'll just make your life so much easier. In the event that the enemy team is stacking magic resist, do not get Rabidon's Death Cap. Go for Void Staff instead, and your life will be just so much easier. Just trust me on that one. And finally, guys, for boot options here, we have a bunch of different options. We have Sorcerer Shoes, we have Plated Steel Caps, and we have Mercury Treads. Sorcerer Shoes are a pretty safe bet most of the time, just providing you with that bonus magic penetration. Very, very nice. 18 flat magic pen is very strong. Really good for taking out squishy targets, especially because it is a flat uh, magic penetration, not percentage. So it does work really good against squishy targets. Uh, plated Steel Caps is then very, very strong to go um, in situations where... You're looking to, you know, maybe the enemy team has a bunch of auto attack reliant champions, a lot of attack damage. Uh, play to steel caps just makes you a lot harder to kill. Uh, so I would recommend doing this if you notice they have three or more auto attack reliant champions on the enemy team. And then Mercury Treads is a fantastic item option a lot of the time too. Diana is kind of hard countered by point and click CC and things that are like just make it easier for the enemy team to, you know, catch you off guard and kill you. Uh, because you are a melee champion, getting stunned is really annoying. Uh, Mercury Treads just negates that with the tenacity that you get, of course. So do consider Mercury Treads too. I think Mercury Treads is a fantastic option to go on Diana. But you have to play it game by game, guys. They're not always going to have a ton of CC. They're not always going to have a ton of auto attack reliant champions. So you got to just make sure that you're building the right item in the right games. That's on you guys to do. Uh, but without further ado, let's get on to the clear pass. All right, so welcome to the clear section of the guide. Here we're going to go over Diana's most efficient clear uh, timing and speed. Of course, starting with your Q level 1 and uh, starting with your jungle item, of course, all standard stuff. What you want to be doing here is you want to be initially kiting over your red buff to your next camp, which is going to be Krugs. And you want to be using your smite on your first buff here, taking your W level 2. Now here, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just want to be keeping the Krugs you know, close to the destination that you're going next, which of course is going to be the raptors 
I'd like to give a quick shout out to Philaris, by the way, for providing us with this clear guide here today. Make sure to check out his channel for all sorts of different jungle routes. Uh, but you see here, we clear out that camp no problem, and now we're on to raptors hitting at once so we can get them all grouped up. And now making, it sh making sure that we can get our passive auto on all of the raptors as you can see here, very important. Popping your W, and then destroying the entire camp was your last passive auto attack there. Taking your E on level 3, and now you're going to go ahead and clear out the wolf camp. Just continuing one by one along your route here, guys. And if you're doing this consistently and you're doing it well, you can get a full clear done pretty quickly. Letting the red buff finish off the wolf camp here. And here we can drag this blue buff over to the gromp where we aggro both of them at the same time and use our resets, you know, just to be able to hit both of them. And you can see here quite clearly when we get to the end of this camp here, by just around 315, you will. 3.07 actually is the exact time you'll be having your full jungle cleared guys. So you can do six camps by 3.07 if you do this correctly. Make sure to hop into practice tool and try this out and practice it just to make sure that you guys have it down pat. So now to move on to the last part of the guide everyone. So on Diana I'm going to go through some tips and tricks here that will help you really just elevate your level of gameplay and make you a stronger player. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick little trick here, guys, that will help you in team fights. So, just to show you real quick, in most fights, uh, you know, there will be... The, the target that you want to kill will generally be in the back line, while the rest of your uh, of their team will be in the front line trying to defend their carry, right? So, a nice little trick to actually apply to your games, everybody, would be to press R here, and then dash onto their carry. And, and what this actually does is... Of course, it CCs their entire backline, or the frontline rather, so that their backline doesn't have any peel. Uh, generally, in this case, it'll be an ADC that's in the back, while there'll be like a couple of tanks, and then maybe a mid laner somewhere in the middle here. So, if you go ahead and you CC their entire frontline, nobody can help their backline from your burst, and you don't want to throw your Q out uh, in this situation just because generally you want to take adva instant advantage of the fact that you just CC'd their frontline. You can get a QE off in, in certain situations like that, uh, but most of the time you just want to not waste a single second, just go in right away and then use your Q while you're right on top of them and just get as many autos as you can uh, just to damage their ADC and one shot them as quickly as possible. Now, another little trick I want to show you guys here is you can actually Q flash and you can R flash. So if you cast your Q animation and then flash, <clears throat> it'll go off instantly, making it, a lot harder, making it a lot harder to react to. As you can see here, here's a flash Q and then here's a Q flash, right? It's a lot faster and it's pretty much impossible to dodge uh, unless the enemy like sees it coming and they like flash away like instantly which never really happens even in like challenger tier games so do keep this in mind and then of course you can also r flash right so you just start casting the animation you can you can see it if you look really closely and then you flash in and it pulls everyone in like that and you can just get the rest of your combo off no problem uh, let's just clear those out next tip that we have here is if you zanya's mid e your e damage <laughs> and your reset will still go off so I'll kind of show you right here. So let's just say that uh, we're going on a target right here. We Q them, then we E. You can see Izania's mid air, but the damage still went off and I still got the reset. And this is gonna be really helpful to dodge out on CC. If, if you're against somebody like an Annie who's just looking to ult you as soon as you go in or something, this could be a nice little outplay. So do keep that in mind guys, you can do this. Right, you see the damage still goes off, and if Annie like is planning to ult you or some shit because you're going for an all-in play, she'll use her ult on nothing, right? And and you'll dodge out on that, and it's just a really nice little tip. Uh, do try this in your games; it will help you quite a bit. Next uh, tip we do have here is your Q actually reveals targets that are invisible. We can't see anything right here, but we throw a Q. Oh, hello! We can now see him, and guess what? We can also dash to him now too. 
Um, this is also very helpful when you guys are in the jungle too and you're looking to run away. Like let's say you're invading and then you know their bot lane collapses or, or their mid lane collapses. You can just hop over this wall like this and get an E reset and keep running. And then maybe do the same thing onto Scuttle Crab with your other E like this and just keep running. Right. Uh, this is really good for also chasing down people as well. Just use this along the path that you're trying to chase somebody down on. Maybe just do this and then you look to dash onto somebody right after this right here. Um, it's a very, very useful tip for running away and chasing and make sure that you guys are making use of this. Uh, and try to get that reset so you get that extra dash after the fact if you're chasing somebody down. Next little tip here guys, this one's actually very interesting. Uh, you can E to the dragon over the wall here. Um, you need to be in the perfect spot though, as you can see right here. Uh, I think it's right here maybe. There it is. Perfect. So, if you stand like right about here, you can E over the wall to the dragon. And this is really, really nice to know, guys. I don't think any Diana players really do this. Um, it is just a really nice tip and it does help you tremendously. You have to be in the perfect spot though, like right there. And you can dash over the wall. Your E dash is extremely far. And you can also do this, of course, onto Baron. I don't know if it, it works on Rift Herald necessarily, but I know it works on Baron. Let's see if we can spawn Baron. <clears throat> Will it spawn it? There it is. So it, it does also work on Baron. I believe you have to be is it right here. Yeah, I think it's right here. It's somewhere right here. There it is, right there. And doing that, of course, can help you secure objectives. Of course, this is very, very useful on Baron and Dragon. So do, the, do with this what you will. Uh, you just need to set up on the right spot. Make sure that you follow exactly uh, how I did it there. And you will be able to steal some objectives that the enemy team had no idea you could steal. Now, uh, another quick note here, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and show you real quick. When you use your abilities, of course, your attack speed does go up tremendously. As you can see here, right, right now it's 1.41, right? Our attack speed is 1.41, and then we, when we use our Q, of course, because of our passive, our attack speed goes up tremendously. So a good tip, guys, is when you are taking towers, to just throw out your Q, keep autoing, E to a minion, keep autoing, just to make sure to have that higher attack speed, guys. Uh, that will help you take down those objectives faster. Of course, this also applies to just in general when you're fighting. You want to be using your abilities, of course, to get that bonus attack speed to auto attack faster, but especially, especially useful against towers. Um, now, another cool tip here, guys, this is one that many Diana players also do not know that I wanted to share with everyone, is you can actually get three dashes. Now, this is relatively difficult to set up, uh, but I'm just going to show you guys real quick here uh, how to do it. So, very basically, guys, what you need to do is you need to QE before your Q hits the secondary target, and then you can get a third dash. So, normally, like if you just Q a target and E to it, you get your dash reset, you get two dashes, right? Pretty straightforward. Now, I'm going to turn off uh, auto refresh cooldown so you guys can see. Uh, but if you do this, if you QE, you can instantly dash again, right? And you can see my auto refresh cooldown is not on. So I'll show you how this works again. We're just going to do this real quick, refresh our E. So watch again, watch closely. So we QE to the first target. And then you see here we get a reset. This one still has the moon lane on it, so we can E to that, and then we can E to this one too, right? And the reason why this works, guys, is because we queued E to the first target before um, the moonlight even procs. If you guys didn't know, technically, if if you Q E and your E hits before your Q, you still get the E reset, and that's why this works the way it does. So you just Q E E E. You get your instant three E's, guys. It's really really helpful. Um, and it, it helps you in lane a lot because generally when there's a lot of minions or whatnot in lane and uh, You want to get like a three dash going you can do it very easily or if there's multiple champions You know grouped up like so you can do it very easily as well So just keep that in mind guys and, and try to apply this in your games uh, You will you will thank me when you do get a really sick three dash combo off and it just makes the enemy team so confused they're like Diana can only dash twice, right? And then they just see you do three dashes and they think like you're hacking or something. But <laughs> regardless, that's going to be my last tip for all of you guys here today. Uh, I really hope that some of these tips helped you guys. You learned something new and the rest of the guide was also helpful to you. Uh, but I will be ending the video here today. So if you did enjoy today's video, make sure that you do drop a like. Make sure you do drop a subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for daily jungle content. It's all informative. It's all educational. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.